Uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this first uh, in-public meeting of the Staffordshire Sustainability Board. Uh, I'd like to welcome um, members, portfolio holders in the room. I'd like to welcome the officers that have joined us today, and also any members of the public that are joining us online, and also to our, our representative from the press sitting in the corner there. Welcome, everybody. Um, first item we'll do is apologies, Liam. Thank you, Chair. I've received apologies from Brian Jones, Sal Khan, Andrew Smith, Ryan Taylor, Justin Johnson, Carl Edwards, Andrew Barrett, Mark Jenkinson, Jonathan Price, David Smith, and Christy Charlesworth. Thank you, Liam. Is there any other apologies that are not noted on that list at the moment? We do have some people that may be running a bit late because of transport issues, but hopefully they will join us as we go along. What I'm going to do now, since this is our first in public meeting, is to go around the room and, and from each district and, and the county to introduce themselves. I'm going to start with um, uh, Cannock first. Thank you, Chair. Josh Preslin, Cannock Chase Council. I'm the Head of Environment and Healthy Lifestyles, and here on behalf of Councillor Justin Johnson. Um, Craig Royal, uh, Waste and Engineering Services Manager of Cannock Chase Council. Thank you. Next is East Staffs. Good afternoon. My name is Ray Faulkner. I'm the Deputy Leader at East Staffs and Portfolio Holder for Environment and Climate Change. And I promise I'm not going to break into an MC Hammer rap while we're here this afternoon. Paul Farrer, Environment Manager at East Staffordshire. Mark Risk, Head of Service at East Savage of the Responsibility for Climate Change. Thank you. Next, Litchfield. I'm Angela Lax. I'm the Cabinet Member for Ecology and Climate Change. Um, my colleague can't make it, so I'm also holding the fault on waste today. <laughs> no problem. And then we've got Newcastle on the line. Sorry, I'm Trevor Johnson, portfolio holder for Environment, Recycling and Waste. Thank you. Um, Andrew Bird, I'm uh, Head of Sustainable Environment for Newcastle Underline Borough Council. Obviously, uh, waste and sustainability being part of my uh, service area. Thank you. South Staffs. Len Bates, uh, Cabinet Member for Community Services and Climate Change. And um, then I... Uh, Rachel oh. Melvin, sorry. <laughs> Go on, Rachel. Rachel Melvin, uh, South Staffordshire uh, Council Waste and Recycling Team Manager and also here today in my capacity as Chair of Staffordshire Waste Partnership. Thank you. Uh, Stafford. Good afternoon. Tracy Redpath, Interim Head of Corporate Business and Partnerships with the Responsibility for Climate Change. Staffordshire Moorlands. Oops, sorry. Thank you. Uh, Lee Booth, Interim Neighbourhood Services Group Manager, Staff Borough Council, Responsibility for Recycling and Waste. Thank you. And now Staffordshire Mullins. Councillor Jay Porter, Cabinet Member for Climate Change and Biodiversity and Vice Chair of the Sustainability Board. Thank you, Joe. Um, I think we're waiting for, for Tamworth to arrive. We understand some... Ah, there we go. Um, Staffordshire Mullins, Climate Change and Biodiversity Officer, Gillian Wright. Thank you. And, and now the County Council's team, which might take a while because there's quite a few officers even the game. But I'm the, the Cabinet Member for uh, Climate Change, Infrastructure and Environment at the County Council. And this is next to me is... Uh, Clive Thompson, Assistant Director of Connectivity and Sustainability. Tim Cooper, Head of Waste and Sustainability. Uh, James Cartwright, Sustainability Manager, Staffordshire County Council. Ilka Hodson, SSB Climate Officer. Uh, Liam Archer, Member in Democratic Services Support Officer. We've also got an officer from the City of Stoke who's uh, here as an observer. Do you want to introduce yourself? Simon Molyneux, Stoke-on-Trent, Waste Delivery and Sustainability Manager. Okay, thank you. I think we've, we've done everybody, haven't we? We haven't missed anybody out. I think it was really important that we did that at the start of this meeting to show the breadth of this partnership and uh, officers and portfolio holders from across the county of Staffordshire are involved in this board. And uh, this board was created in um, January 2022 as a response to the local authorities in Staffordshire announcing a uh, climate emergencies 
and uh, this forum was quickly put together as a central hub for discussing and addressing relevant environmental sustainable challenges that we face in Staffordshire. Elected members, particularly those that hold those portfolios for sustainability, climate change and waste from the councils, come together to discuss matters affecting authorities to decide outcomes and objectives for collective projects to um, be more sustainable and also to reduce our carbon emissions. Um, it's a collaborative forum uh, and encourages all the councils to work together, influencing change, striving towards a common goal of achieving net zero in our respective authorities. Uh, the board joined forces with Joint Waste Management Board in January 2023 to improve its effectiveness even further in directing and monitoring the sustainability and waste agenda under one board. Um, this will allow us to make clear and concise recommendations to the Staffordshire Leaders Board or to our respective cabinets, uh, ensuring that sustainability and climate change remain a top agenda in this county. Um, the board recognises the importance of addressing climate change and the urgency of taking action. We are working together to create a sustainable future for our communities and providing a platform for local authorities to share ideas, best practice and take that collaborative action towards achieving a carbon zero Staffordshire. One of the best acts of the uh, Staffordshire Board so far was to agree a 10 base pledge um, for us all, uh, which we've taken through our respective cabinets across the county. These pledges provide a foundation for all of us in Staffordshire in the two-tier area to work together on a sustainable future and report back to this board quarterly on the progress which we are making. Additionally, um, the board's communications plan is now live um, and has been funded by um, all of the authorities around uh, this table to ensure that information on sustainability and climate change is communicated effectively to all our stakeholders, residents, community groups, and also to, to the wider government as well, whose agenda we try to influence. Um, all the local authorities in the room are taking an EV strategy through their respective cabinets for approval. The promotion of electric vehicles is a crucial component of our strategy to reduce carbon emissions in our county. The board is also actively engaged with the Emergency Emerging Staffordshire Climate Commission. This partnership allows us to engage with experts in fields across the sector and develop effective strategies to combat climate change in our county. Uh, the board has also engaged in, in, in the short time it's been um, in, in formation with local businesses and community groups to work, who work on environmental improvements in our communities and also to raise awareness across um, the county. This engagement will help to create a collaborative effort to promote sustainability and reduce carbon emissions across the county. Um, the last 12 months have seen the harmonisation of the dry mixed recycling system across Staffordshire. This standardisation ensures that all local authorities collecting dry mixed recycling the do so in the same way, making it easier for residents to recycle and contribute to the reduction of waste in Staffordshire. Lastly, the board has made representations to national government on waste policy. This representation ensures that national government is aware of the efforts of Staffordshire councils and our commitment to promoting sustainability and reducing waste. So in its first year, we've made significant progress in promoting our agenda and combating climate change in Staffordshire. And we make this pleasure that we continue to do that as a board and create that sustainable future for all of Staffordshire's residents and beyond. That's my opening comments, but I'd just like to bring in uh, the vice chair, um, Joe. Thank you, Chair. So just following up on that, obviously we're all here to talk about the Staffordshire Sustainability Board's vision of achieving net zero carbon emissions by um, 2050 or sooner if possible, and the steps that will be taken to achieve this goal collectively across the entire county. The Staffordshire leaders and chief executive groups uh, group have committed to work together obviously on this agenda and successfully achieve the ambitions that we've all got across the county in line with our independent authorities climate change declarations. It is recognised that the council's collective carbon footprint is around 2% of all of Staffordshire's total carbon emissions but it's obviously documented that we have quite a lot of influence obviously on the overall emissions, which is why it's really important the work that we do. The board will work together as democratically elected bodies in Staffordshire to influence that change and to encourage organisations and individuals across the county to ensure that Staffordshire 
is net carbon zero by 2050 or sooner. Sustainability and habitat biodiversity will be reviewed throughout the year and shall be considered in revised vision for next year. So obviously we, it's a very important part of the agenda that is as well. Throughout all the activities and discussions that resonate from the board, we shall actively engage with external organisations that can bring specialist knowledge, understanding and facilitation to the board. The board comprises senior members of each local authority across the county and we're of course supported by officers across the room as well. The councils have made a number of commitments to achieve net carbon emissions, uh, net zero carbon emissions, including baseline reporting, carbon literacy training, we're all making good progress with that, um, green travel planning, communications, green energy procurement, energy reduction, low carbon fueled fleet vehicles, waste and recycling, innovation and technology. We hope that these commitments will inspire others across Staffordshire to take similar bold steps and help us achieve this vision of a sustainable and carbon neutral future. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Um, and I move my slide deck on if I can. One of the key things we need to do is monitor how we uh, perform against those, those base pledges. And later on the agenda, we do have a, a performance monitoring report, which Clive uh, will be introducing. But as you can see on the screen there, those are the, the key performance um, um, reports um, before us. But we'll have a drill down into that later. And then on the waste side, uh, it's vitally important that we reduce the waste we create in Staffordshire and the waste that we do create that we cycle more. Uh, and there are some key indicators attached to that, which we'll also discuss in more detail later. But one of the key things of, of the, the board is that it, it really covers the whole county, and then each of the districts is doing a lot of work um, and a lot of good things within their area to um, not only create a sustainable environment, but to reduce those, those carbon emissions. And we all have plans that we've taken through our cabinets, and it's, uh, it's just good in this first public meeting to be able to, to go through that now and to ask each of the districts to to um, give a presentation on, um, on behalf of their district. And the first one up on the list, if I press the button, is going to be Cannock Chase Council. Over to you. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, as I said earlier, I'm, I'm going to present this on behalf of Councillor Justin Johnson, and I will try and be brief, because I know we've got quite a lot to get through. So the Cost in Action Plan was first published in uh, December 2023. The plan itself contains 119 projects or areas regarding sustainability across six key themes, um, energy, natural capital, nature-based solutions, non-residential, residential, transport, and then cross-cutting. We're one of the first councils uh, in the country to have a fully costed action plan. Uh, and there's 17 district-wide and eight organizational projects have been completed so far. We're also working alongside ONGI on the Zero Carbon Rugeley project um, with our economic development, housing and partnerships, and sustainability officers uh, with also with, alongside the Zero Carbon Rugeley community. That's a nationally funded project based around the development of the former Rugeley Power Station site in Rugeley, um, looking at a zero carbon community. Hawks Green development of low energy homes. We've, we've literally built 44 new low energy homes on part of the former Hawks Green site, the Hawks Green Depot site. Properties include solar PV, electric vehicle charging, low energy fixtures and fittings, and high specification installation, resulting in the majority of the CPCs being of level, of, of sort of CPC level being above. Binworld Environmental Awareness Programme, we are extremely proud of this at Canic Chase. Uh, our environmental health and street scene teams um, visited 19 local primary schools. They did 33 environmental awareness um, sessions with 1,550 pupils. All staff and pupils were invited to one of five theatre performances held at our Prince of Wales and Red Rose Theatres. Um, a local high school, school drama group um, from Kingsmead High School in Hensford produced the Binworld Theatre performance that was written for us some years ago um, as a second iteration of that. Council officers will be more than happy to return to the board at some point and present that to members as well going forward. 
small change, big difference campaign, following on from the Binworld um, Environmental Awareness Programme. The council has been working from, with pupils from five local secondary schools, six primary schools, and one youth community group, and other community partners on a project with five environmental themes, energy use, nature and wildlife, waste reduction, wa waste reduction, cleaner air, and your environment. A series of master classes have been held, uh, led by an expert in the field, and young people then invited to make, to, uh, make a short eco film of, of their chosen theme or topic. Um, the film premiere will be held in May 2023 as part of an eco festival that's planned. The establishment of the first uh, urban, forestry, urban forest in the district, the council's first urban forest at Parabill Lane, continues to establish, establish itself well. We planted just under 4,000 trees and bushes on part of a, a former common land site at Pie Green Hensford. The scheme was a finalist in the Landscape Institute Award for Excellence in Community Engagement. Sadly, we didn't win. Uh, but in addition to that, we've planted over 9,000 trees, bushes, and hedgerow species over the last 12 months as part of capital works across the district. Solar PV installation, sorry, solar battery PV installation. We've installed 75 properties with solar PV um, battery systems. Um, we're in association with, with partners at Chase Solar, uh, that are a community interest group. These have been fitted on, on council housing properties where we had existing PVs fitted some years ago. That work, system works, so it, it um, allows the solar panels to um, power the batteries which are charged during the day and then they discharge into the system overnight. Green travel. We work, we're working on our green travel strategy, as, as previously mentioned, sit alongside the counties and then working with partners including Staffordshire Wildlife Trust on our nature recovery declaration. Sorry, I've missed it. Oh, no, that's right. Um, we're working with partners including Staffordshire Wildlife Trust on a nature recovery declaration and developing a Commonwealth Games legacy to encourage um, green travel and starting to incorporate cycle play areas into our parks and open spaces. Working on nature recovery, recovery EV charging and low emission fleet strategies, the Council continues to work with partners such as um, Energy Saving Trust, Staffordshire Wildlife Trust and Sustainability West Midlands on areas such as nature recovery, public and organisational electric vehicle charging and energy charging network mapping. We're engaging with residents on green travel and climate change, so we've surveyed our residents so far and engaged with them. We've worked with local schools and community groups, and we're working alongside ONGI and the Zero Carbon community, as I've previously mentioned, with much more engagement to follow in 2023. Fleet and taxi reviews with the Energy Saving Trust. Uh, we started off uh, last year by looking at our, our own fleet and also our taxi fleet within the district. Um, and we're engaging with our taxi drivers and companies about the move to lower emission vehicles and not just um, EV vehicles on that. Local area planning project uh, with Energy, Cat Energy Catapult Bureau Hapold. The council has been working with Bureau Hapold together with Litchfield District and Stafford Borough Councils on local area planning energy planning networks. That's an offshoot of the um, Zero Carbon Roosley project, which is centrally funded by government. Carbon literacy training for members, I'm nearly there, you'll be glad to hear. Um, the second round of carbon literacy training has been completed by elected members and relevant officers. The training was run by Metropolitan, Me Metropolitan, sorry, Manchester Metropolitan University and Great Places Housing in association with the Carbon Trust. Then improved quality of dry mix recycling, uh, again, as, as Councillor Porter uh, referenced, we have uh, moved to dual stream dry mix, dry mix recycling, which has significantly improved the quality of our dry mix recycling. Uh, it's improved the overall back end quality from leaving our materials recycling facility, and also it's increased our residents' capacity for, for recycling. And then finally, significant reduction in con contamination in our recycling. That move has also meant that we have not seen a rejected load over the last 12 months. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Move to East Staffs now for the team there. If you could uh, speak into the, into the mic to enable everybody to hear. Um, thanks, Ray. Thank you. At East Staffs, we've done an awful lot of work, and uh, the first page of our uh, presentation actually identifies we had a declaration of a climate emergency, followed by a climate change action plan. There are 57 contained actions within there, Actually, those 57 have been honed down from around 150, where 
some of the other targets have been introduced within a specific target. So they've, of those 57 actions, there could be five or six underlying those feeding into them. The uh, carbon change, climate change and NATO strategy as, uh, states our four aims in uh, commitment to becoming carbon neutral by 2050. And we have a climate change supplementary planning document which was developed to mitigate climate change on development which makes sure that whenever we have a uh, housing development or even industrial development where the biodiversity is actually changed, we ensure that we get more biodiversity on the site than actually has been taken away from the, by the development. And we look for at least a 10% biodiversity net gain. You see there that uh, we have uh, EV charging points. We had one already in Utoxta. Um, over 18 months that's been in place. We now have three in Cooper Square car park. And we're looking at this moment in time for future charging points for on-street parking. East Staffordshire Borough has the largest number of on-street parking issues within the county, and it's a real problem and we are commissioning a survey to identify the best places to put on street parking charging for our residents. As you see there, that the climate change and nature recovery are always considered in all council uh, decisions and strategies, policies and plans. And if my colleague can actually move up to the next slide for me, thank you. Um, we have a total of 2,500 native tree species were planted between 21 and 22. We intend to uh, plant another 5,000 over the next four years. Uh, before we embark on that, we want to adopt a uh, trees and woodland strategy. I attended a, uh, a session about three weeks ago with uh, a guy called John Stokes from the Woodland Commission and found it extremely instructive and decided that we just can't continue in the way we're doing in planting trees in wherever we find the open space, but actually have a strategy for planting them. As you see there, the Washlands Enhancement Project is underway, and that is uh, alongside the Trent, transforming the Trent Valley with Staffordshire Wildlife and South Derbyshire Wildlife. And there were, uh, I think it was 23 million pounds worth of flood defences put in place by the Environment Agency to ensure that the whole of Burton doesn't get flooded. At this moment in time, it's difficult to understand how our diversity and our biodiversity will survive if the Trent floods, um, because lots of uh, those creatures will get flooded and uh, actually by putting in flood defences didn't help there. I would have much preferred the more expensive dredging of the Trent to allow the river to flow more freely and prevent flooding. But as it stands, that is government policy. The Stainwell Gardens and Bramshall Park have uh, achieved green flag standards. We will be entering uh, uh, those parks again and we have further parks that we will be putting in for green flag standards over the next four years. Reduce mowing regimes and to increase wild, create wildflowers and bee friendly parks. This is one of the things that came from our Britain in Bloom, where East Staffordshire won several gold awards during the Heart of England award. And we came with a, first time we entered Britain in Bloom, we came with a silver gilt award. So we want to ensure that we continue that good work for our residents and also for our climate change and biodiversity. And this includes the reduced mowing regimes and the, uh, the fact that once you've got wildflowers there, our residents recognize that over a period of time, they actually develop and increase and that's what we intend to do over the years to allow those wildflower meadows to increase and spread. And that will reduce the mowing regimes uh, to ensure that biodiversity net gain continues to gather pace. There is a new building in our Go Gardens in Utoxta which will help grow our own plants and trees. 
and we actually in, intend to become uh, sustainable in our tree growing within our own borough. Uh, we're not looking to uh, be buying and, and transporting trees in from anywhere else after another two to three years and we want to be uh, self sufficient within that and that will reduce significantly carbon emissions and we want to be planting mature trees rather than whips because they are far more sustainable uh, and obviously a single use plastic section plan has been developed and they're just a few of the highlights uh, we have done um, as our Connick colleagues have said we've actually developed our dry recycling to ensure that we get much better uh, recycling material through the uh, facility and we also have increased our um, garden waste through uh, the new facility there. So we intend to continue the actions and we are focused on the future and the actions for the future and the plans to actually develop those actions and look forward to actually making sure that our net zero is uh, arrived at far quicker than 2050, although I won't be around to see that. Thank you. Thank you. And now to Litchfield District. Thank you, Chairman. Over the last year, a lot of effort has gone into raising the profile and priority of climate change, impact, sustainability, and nature recovery at Litchfield District Council to members, our staff and residents. I am the designated portfolio holder for climate change and biodiversity, and we have a dedicated ecology and climate change team, and we have focused on presenting an open door to residents, significantly enhancing our communications to engage and inform about our activities. At Litchfield, we are in the process of writing our next corporate strategy, which looks towards 2050 rather than the usual four-year political cycle to set greater ambitions for the district. After a hugely successful public consultation, analysis showed that there was no doubt that the environment and issues affecting it are considerably important to our residents. We expect green to be a main theme of this strategy. In respect of climate change, one of our biggest challenges is tackling the impacts as an authority is, and this is the really hard part in some ways for many of us, is communicating this subject and subsequent responsibility to all staff, as this is something we can only tackle together and not just rely on a small number of individuals. So at Litchfield, we've carried out training and awareness to several members and staff and a council-wide climate change workshop was held, motivated, and enthuse the workforce, giving everyone a seat at the table to be part of the change, generating meaningful conversation, ideas, and highlighting individuals with a passion to do more where they can. A cross-departmental climate and environment group is being formed to boost momentum and provide support, and an environmental dashboard to visually show our position and progress of our organization carbon reduction plan. Our green space meeting invites the other city and parish councils and community groups of the district to change their mowing strategies and discuss environmental projects that make a difference locally. So with Staffordshire Wildlife Trust, where we're going to have wildflowers and reduce mowing, we're going to be having little advertising boards to inform residents as they walk past what is happening and why something may not look as pretty as they would expect at certain times of the year. Um, we've now got up and running, but it's a work in progress, a dedicated button on our website, which is very much to uh, provide information for residents, but for groups to share ideas, all relating to carbon reduction and native nature recovery um, and another thing that's just started is with our youth council um, consulting with them on problems that have arisen such as the environmental problems caused by disposable vaping and another resident raised the issue of 
engines, car engines idling outside schools. So that's something we thought the Youth Council would be something to work with them um, and engage. On the ecology, this enhances the works of our parks and ecology teams who continue out to carry out great work to protect and enhance our local wildlife. We've planted six tiny forests around the district, swapped park and street cleaning vehicles for electric, and encouraged events to focus on environmental impact. Ecolo ecological enhancements and habitat management works have been occurring on our designated sites to improve the quality for wildlife corridors and species. As an early adopter of biodiversity net gain, our award-winning ecology team has been called upon this year to work alongside DEFRA, the District Council's network, the Local Government Association, and Planning Advisory Service to share our knowledge and help councils nationwide. We've also secured over £500,000 for nature recovery within the ditch district and mapped other opportunities. And as they say, next slide, please. It's waste. <laughs> The introduction of and direction of travel for the Joint Waste Service is positive, in particular the dual stream collections. Despite some early challenges, we have high resident participation and all rounds are being collected on time. This has helped us achieve much better quality material of dry recycling, some being excellent for reuse. Consequently, we get very few complaints about service delivery. With a major round review and communications plan, we have recruited staff and developed a workforce strategy, training all staff and seven loaders to become HGV drivers. You may recall there have been shortages of that in the past, which can affect um, round collections. So it's been a busy, positive year, and we will build on this momentum to do even more the next. Climate change impact, sustainability and nature recovery will continue to remain top priorities for Litchfield District Council to provide a better service as a local authority and a place to live, work and enjoy for our residents and visitors. Thank you very much. Thank you, Angela. Move on now to Newcastle under Lyme Borough Council, Trevor and Andrew. Thank you, Chair. We've been successful in gaining government carbon reduction funding for a number of projects looking at carbon reduction in community centres with 20 facility audits completed and also a solar farm feasibly, feasibility study, which really excites me. Uh, we've commissioned a roadmap to net zero by 2030 for the council's operations and estate, uh, CO2 emissions and other particulates, oh, sorry, hydro-treated vegetable oil fuel for the council's heavy goods vehicles and we're saving 90% CO2 to emissions and other particulates. Rolled out mandatory carbon literacy and sustainability training to all council staff and members and two cohorts of sustainability champions completing Keele University's Net Zero Skills Bootcamp course. Targeted communication campaign to increase participation in separate food waste collections, including schools, education campaign. We have completed the first four phases of our urban tree planting strategy with 12 sites being planted with around 265 specimen native species and protected as urban carbon capture parks for future generations. There is a further phase of urban tree planting currently taking place including 850 native lime trees to form the borough's, to form the borough's 850th anniversary lime forest and further native woodlands. Uh, we've got agreed policies that put sustainability at the heart of our emerging borough local plan and improving energy efficiency, performance with 38 domestic properties through the social housing and anti and decarbonisation fund. And that's as much as I've got, Chair. Any further to add, Andrew? Um, yeah, just really to say, um, you know, I think we're, we're pleased with um, the progress that we've, we've made um, following some structural changes uh, within the authority so over the last 12 months. Um, in particular, um, the road, I'd like to draw attention really to the roadmap. So, um, Josh from Canic um, spoke about um, that they were one of the first to complete that. And for us, this is going to be really important moving forward because it will give us a costed 
action plan, um, certainly for the Borough Council zone operations to get to net zero uh, by 2030, but also importantly, uh, work that we need to do uh, in terms of the community of uh, the Borough of Newcastle under Lyme um, to get it to uh, carbon neutral by 2050. So we're really quite excited by that piece of work. And again, that, that will influence um, our action plans and operations um, moving forward once that's complete. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Moving now to uh, South Staffordshire Council. Len. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just like our colleagues across the, the county, South Staffordshire Council is proud of its progress and achievements to mitigate climate change in the district. During 2022, we delivered a programme of events as part of our Climate Change Festival as a means to engage with residents and to raise awareness of this important issue. We have distributed over 4K funding through our Climate Prize to kickstart 21 exciting community carbon projects. We are incorporating carbon-friendly development measures within our emerging local plan. We are reaching out to businesses and schools and partners and have hosted several network events to highlight the good practice and opportunities available through organisations such as the Staffordshire Business and Environmental Network. As a council, we're working to reduce the carbon footprint of our own operation. We have reduced this by 37% from a baseline in 2020 and look forward to developing our path to zero. Uh, zero. Uh, zero. Thank you. I'll move now on to uh, waste and recycling. And from waste and recycling perspective, we are recycling performance continues to be strong. We've collected over 8,000 tonnes of garden waste from sub subscribers and composited this material locally within South Staffordshire. We've also collected over 8,000 tonnes of recycling and again, we have delivered this to local Staffordshire Energy Recovery Facility, which again is locally based within South Staffordshire. We continue uh, to be zero uh, waste to landfill uh, authority as a result. In May 2022, we commenced our dual stream recycling service with residents now separating paper and card from other recyclable materials. This has resulted in an improvement in the quality of recycling and fewer rejections of non-recyclable material. To continue to support our residents to recycle even more, we have delivered a number of communication campaigns, including Let's Get Real campaign for the recycle work and a Win Don't Bin campaign for Food Waste Action Week. Mr Chairman, this completes my report. Thank you, Len. Moving now to the county town of Stafford and Mark and his team. Thank you, Chair. Um, it's great to hear so many positive reports around the chamber. Um, it's actually quite an exciting time for, for all of us in terms of, of the green agenda, and a lot of it, I hate to say, is just common sense. But anyway, we'll um, start off with, with my report um, for uh, Stafford. We basically, in um, 2020, uh, we made a commitment um, that with the, over the next 20 years, uh, we would reduce emissions, working partnership, uh, and mitigate uh, wherever possible um, to climate change. And after that, and that's the important bit, after that, continue to implement our green recovery objectives. Uh, we've made quite a lot of um, progress, as other, others have around the table, over the last 12-month uh, period, and we're really, really quite pleased with what's happened. Uh, part of that is down to uh, the, the leader of the council, um, 
elected to have an extra cabinet member for climate change. So, so that gives the commitment and shows the commitment from Stafford Borough that, that we, we mean business on this. We, we really want to make sure that uh, uh, we go for, for climate change and, and follow the green recovery strategy. We've done a lot of uh, activities ourselves, the, the usual um, LED lighting, um, contracted services. Uh, we, we continue to work with both Freedom, Leisure and Veolia to try and cut um, waste wherever possible. Um, one of the interesting ones I found is within Veolia, uh, we, we're doing trials to, to see what, whether we can use alternative fuels in the bin wagons. I mean, what can be better than having bin wagons that are picking up waste? They're actually running off green fuel and it's, it's, it's a good advert for us, for all of us, if, if we can get that working forwards. There's electrical uh, charging points we're putting in, all of the usual, but we're still looking. We're still looking at what else we can do. I've just been to Birmingham City Council plants, uh, planting area of all places to look at uh, a project being done by Aston University. And what they're doing is, is, is they've got a demonstrator, or a working demonstrator unit, which is actually taking green waste from the nurseries and, uh, and creating... Um, through pyrolysis, which is running at different heats and different temperatures and, and, and different pressures, actually creating oil, um, carbon to put back into the soil, and, uh, and gases as well. So, so exciting times. And I think once we start to get industry interested in the green agenda, um, that's when we'll start. And I think that's one of the priorities for Staffordshire and for Stafford to get the green, green agenda going forwards. Um, obviously, the sustainability board here is really important. We feel that it's great to be a, a partner with, with all the other districts and with the county because uh, without that partnership, we would start, things would fall through, through the um, gaps. As a borough, uh, we're looking at active travel, um, biodiversity, uh, nature recovery, taxi licensing, and, and just trying to initiate behavioural change in, in our residents. Uh, and that leads through to a community panel. We've got 15 members, and th they are very focused on, on green issues. Uh, and that's what we need, because while the rest of us are looking at keeping the council going and everything, we need someone who's going to sort of look over our shoulders and say, listen, guys, we don't think you're doing enough, or, or how about if we do this, how about if we do that? We are, as a council, open to uh, um, suggestion. And some of the things we're talking about is plastic and waste reduction, food and farming, and I'm a farmer, so I know that's important, because uh, someone said to me, what happens if we do this and this? I said, well, you just won't have enough food to eat. So we've got to make sure that, that while we're looking at the green agenda, we're making sure this, this is uh, agriculture going on and food reduction going on, and it's done in a sustainable way. Uh, in terms of uh, green recovery, some of the things we're doing... Uh, you may have heard of the Stafford Brooks project, whereby we've got money from the um, highways agency, whatever they call themselves now, probably the, the big road gang or something, because every year they change the names. But the important thing is they've given us £4.1 million towards environmental um, projects within uh, Stafford Borough. Uh, we've planted, we've got a local nature re reserve that's been created. Uh, we've planted 750 trees there, uh, and thanks to all the volunteers that helped us with that, really important. And then at Stone, we've planted another 250 uh, trees, so uh, at least 1,000 trees without what, what individuals have done have been put into Stafford Borough. Uh, in terms of the cost of living crisis, we've been trying to work with private landlords to make sure that... Uh, uh, houses are heated as efficiently as possible, not just to save money, but also to make sure our residents are kept warm and healthy. And uh, in terms of benchmarking, uh, we've looked at benchmarking, uh, and the report I got in front of me said that we were ninth in the list in the West Midlands, and I'm sure you guys are up there somewhere uh, as well, um, but we're actually not ninth, uh, we're third, so as a borough council, I think that's something we can be really, really, really pleased with. 
Uh, in terms of waste collection, we've got a great partnership with uh, Veolia. Uh, we're looking to work with Canic as we go forwards, and hopefully we can come to some sort of joint uh, waste collection there, so that, that'll be good. At the moment, we're getting 99.9% .9 hits on collections. The blue bags, the, the, which has got the cardboard in, that's all recycled in the UK. Uh, the brown bins uh, scheme, the charging scheme, uh, continues, and, and we've already had uh, the same uptake as last year, and I think actually it's, it's um, surpassing that. And the final thing is uh, we have got put solar panels at the, um, at the nursery site. They've been there for a few years, but uh, it doesn't do any harm to just count what we've done in the past as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, now for Staffordshire County Council, which uh, report that I'm introducing. Um, we've made good progress in addressing the challenges of climate change via our carbon um, reduction action plan. And we've achieved um, a 43% reduction in carbon emissions since 2019. And this achievement is a testimony to our commitment to addressing climate change and promoting the sustainability within our community. We've had an instrumental role in setting up this board as the County Council, and, and we, we, we service this board through, through officers of the County Council and also the jointly funded officer as well for this board. And that uh, indicates our comprehensive approach to approaching sustainability. And we're actively engaging with our council partners, stakeholders across the sector as we continue to work towards achieving our goal um, of net zero by 2050 and the other goals we signed up to as part of the Sustainability Board. Through our Climate Change Action Fund, we have helped 290 community groups and awarded over £200,000 over the past few years to help residents and community groups tackle climate change. This initiative demonstrates our commitment to supporting the local effort to reduce those emissions and promote sustainable practices and an environment across our county. We've approved a number of, um, of policies throughout this last year. Um, the local cycling and walking infrastructure plan, which has secured uh, 2.2 million pounds of investment for cycling and walking infrastructure to promote sustainable transport options and reducing reliance on cars. We've taken the EV strategy through our cabinet. We've also taken the joint comms plan through our cabinet. And we held a conference uh, at last autumn, uh, climate change conference, which was attended by um, 70 odd community groups, either online or in person. Uh, which went down really well and we hope to do the same again this year. We've given away thousands of trees to residents to enable planting um, and helping to reduce carbon. And we've also planted over the last year 17,500 trees on, on business parks and, and, and the, the county's country estate. And this is all working towards uh, contributing to biodiversity in the region as we move towards our uh, local nature recovery strategy, which the County Council will be the lead authority on. We'll be working with every district in the table here, in, in, in the room around the table here, and also our communities across the county. In Waste Matters, uh, I'm pleased to report that we made significant process, uh, progress in managing waste that is created within Staffordshire. So far this year, we've sent 156,000 tonnes of uh, waste to the energy recovery facility. In addition, we've helped three local authorities, Walsall, Samwell and Warwickshire, to send 160 tonnes of waste to the energy recovery facility that has produced 26 megawatts of power, powering over 66,000 uh, homes. Um, and we've also successfully brought back in our network of 14 household waste recycling sites um, and we've reused 328 tonnes of items which would have been thrown away and have recycled 45,000 tonnes of waste through those sites. We've introduced low carbon fuels in our fleet and we plan to trial this initiative with 16 JCBs. These efforts, to demonstrate, these efforts demonstrate our commitment to reducing carbon emissions and promoting sustainable practices in waste management. It's worth noting that only 61 tonnes of waste has been sent directly to landfill, and that is when the, the waste, to, waste to energy plant is obviously down for maintenance. And that, um, in an agreement that we're working with Viola, that's going to be reduced even more in the future. And this highlights our commitment to reducing the amount of waste sent to landfill, which has a significant act on the environment. In conclusion, we have made significant progress in managing waste and promoting sustainable practices in, at Staffordshire County Council. And we continue to work towards our goal and explore new initiatives to reduce carbon emissions even further and promoting sustainability, not only in the operations of the council, but across the communities of the county, working with our districts and other partners. Uh, moving on now to um, Staffordshire Moorlands. Joe. Thank you, Chair. 
Um, I'm really pleased with the progress that we've made in Staffordshire Moorlands over the past year and also over the past nearly four years since we declared a climate emergency back in July 2019. It's been a collective team effort. Everyone across the council has been involved in this. Every area of the council has worked hard to get on board of this very important agenda. I'm delighted that we've um, committed to invest around four million pounds over a two-year period. So over the last financial year and the year to come, we're investing four million pounds in our actions to tackle climate change. And as it says on the slides, one of the big achievements that we've just recently implemented is the new biofuel mix across all our council fleet. Like Newcastle Borough Council, we've implemented that and it's going to have around a 90% reduction in the emissions from our council fleet vehicles, which is a real quick win. And also, that's going to have a huge impact on our waste vehicles. And it doesn't say in the slides, but I will just mention some of the waste stuff. So, um, we, in terms of the recycling rate, it's averaged between 54 and 58% over the last couple of years. Our recycling rate has in the moorlands. It remains the highest in Staffordshire and then the top 30 in the country. And... We've had a real successful programme across all the local schools where we've promoted waste recycling and climate change with one of our fleet vehicles where they've gone out and done some outreach work with the pupils across all the different schools. In terms of our work with the Energy Saving Trust, they've done an assessment of all our fleet because what we want to do is to get the lowest carbon fleet vehicles that we can but within realistic timescales depending on the finances so obviously we replace them every seven years and we're aiming to get them all to low carbon as soon as we can we've recently assessed that we've reduced the emissions from our council buildings by 25 percent over the last couple of years so a lot of that is down to things like energy efficiency measures and different changes in the use of council buildings because obviously during covid we've had changes in how we use our council buildings, you know, staff working from home and using the buildings in different ways. We've also got a sustainable procurement policy, so we're making sure that, we're, that we always buy local first, which obviously reduces the mileage on products and services that we use as a council, and we obviously aim to make sure we've got sustainable suppliers. As part of that £4 million figure that I just mentioned, we are investing just under £2 million in decarbonising our leisure centres. So we're going to have solar panels on the Biddulph Leisure Centre and Leak Leisure Centre. And obviously we're looking at measures for Cheadle, so South Morland's Leisure Centre as well. And as part of that package, we're looking at things like um, loads of different things to obviously insulate the buildings and try and have heat pumps, etc. So it's all a big package, that is. And we have... We've already replaced all the LED, all the lights and the leisure centres to LED lights as well, so that's a really good quick win. We've done an energy and water audit of all our council buildings. We've sorted that out. We've also appointed a climate change and biodiversity officer. So Gillian over there is our climate change officer who's been in post now for a year, I think it is, this month. And we've also got our head of climate change, David Smith, and... I just want to put on record my thanks to both of them for the excellent work they've done across the council to get everybody on board of this agenda. In terms of biodiversity, we've transferred the management of our countryside sites to Staffordshire Wildlife Trust. So we've transferred 11 countryside sites to Staffordshire Wildlife Trust. That's something we've negotiated over a long period of time. We've done that because we want to focus on nature recovery across those sites. It now means that Staffordshire Wildlife Trust I've got a lot of nature reserves to manage and um, obviously that's a good thing because it means we've got those specialist experts in the field managing those sites, which is great. Um, in terms of carbon literacy, we've so far achieved bronze status for that across our council staff, but we're just about to get silver for that. And in terms of our climate change action plan, we were rated second best district council in the country for our plan by climate emergency UK. We've also had a climate change community fund which has been really successful this year so we've rolled out money to 14 different projects through the Staffordshire Moorlands 
green network, which we've facilitated with support Staffordshire, so that it can be like an independent process, and it's led by, by them. And that's been really good. And as part of that, we've also had a very successful green networking event, which Gillian organised, where we had a lot of community groups and parish councils come and talk about the stuff that they're doing in their local communities. And we've done a lot of stuff with... Um, Chinook Valley Farmers and various business networks in the district so that we can ensure that we have that district-wide effort on this agenda. We've also got a brand new climate youth programme which has been developed with Skivvies and with the Globe Foundation. That's, we've just actually launched that and the whole idea of that is we want to equip local young people with the skills and knowledge they need to campaign on environmental issues and make the change they want in their communities, so things like public speaking and campaigning skills. Um, we've also successfully planted over 23 community orchards, which I'm sure you've all heard me talk about at previous meetings. It's something which we're very proud of in the Borlands because it's a great way of involving community groups in tackling climate change in a very tangible way, on the ground sort of way, in their local communities where they can plant community orchards and they can invest that time and effort into developing them over time. We've also got a dedicated programme to encourage um, people to walk and cycle to work as well, which has been very successful. We've got more staff walking and cycling to work. Um, we've also got our EV strategy, which we've recently approved. And within that, one thing, what we've done is we've approved the strategy so that 5% um, of all our council car park spaces will have EV charging points on them and we're going for the fastest possible charges in most of those, because obviously that's not just great for tackling climate change, it's also great for tourism, great in the moorlands for rural tourism, when people make those long journeys and they want to obviously have those charging facilities. And we've also worked with Alton Towers to encourage them to have EV charging points in their car park, because until recently, I don't know whether they have many charging points, but we've encouraged them to do that, which is obviously a quick win, that is, as well. We've also got Staffordshire Wildlife Trust that have put together our local plan for nature, which is just about to be released very soon. It's in the, it's like 99% done now, so obviously that's really positive. Um, we've ob I've obviously mentioned the Green Network already, and we've created engagement videos, which um, we've obviously done as part of our comm strategy to encourage people to do stuff, obviously, within their community and there are two other things I just want to briefly mention that aren't on the slides which I've just thought of which is we've also got the Wilder River Chinook project where we've got Staffordshire Wildlife Trust and a number of other partners like the Environment Agency all working together on a project which is £176,000 of funding from National Lottery and DEFRA to improve flood management but also try and lock carbon in as well so that's a real positive project across i think it's seven or eight different sites across um, the moorlands that are all linked to the river churn it and we're also crucially working with your housing group on decarbonizing social housing as well so obviously that's really important we've developed a real positive partnership with them on that agenda um, so yeah i'd just like to thank all the people that obviously we work with as district council on this agenda obviously we've made Solid progress, but we've got a long way to go to hit our ambitious targets. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. And then last but certainly not least, Tamworth, Stephen. Thank you, Chair. The Borough Council has looked to carry out the following measures that will enable the Council to start to move towards a more sustainable and environmentally friendly approach in the coming years as we look to combat climate change and its effects. One thing that struck me this morning on the way here, um, a lot of you may have missed this because I happened to be late and I caught the um, report that was briefed on Radio 4, and it actually states that we've missed the target of, one, of uh, increases in climate change by 1.5%. We've actually missed that now. We failed. But unfortunately, we haven't got the luxury of going home and forgetting about it because we have to correct the damage that's been done. For me, I see now that we're not looking to fight combat, uh, stop uh, climate change. We're looking to combat the effects and improve the environment that's left for our kids and our grandkids. So, um, 
Tamworth's initial uh, 12 months, which will set the basis for further change, because we all need to change even further. And listening to Staffordshire Moorlands, there's some very good work being done there, and I'll be looking to go through that report uh, in more in depth. So, we've adopted its first carbon baseline position in October of 2022, approved resources to prepare an action plan for the authority, approved resources to deliver a climate change officer for three years from April 2023 to support workload, have ordered an awaiting delivery of seven electric vehicle, uh, fleet vehicles to support street scene operations, and are in discussions with BP Pulse to deliver a 12-bay EV charging hub on a council-owned car park. In addition, Tamworth continues to pledge its support uh, to both its partners and the efforts made by the Staffordshire Sustainability Board. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen, and thank you for everybody for those reports. I think it shows the amount of work that's going on across the county and also uh, the possibilities for joint learning in all the authorities. That's why this board is so, so really crucial for us because great things are going on in Staffordshire Moorlands, good things are going on in Newcastle, and I'm not going to say all the districts, great, but in, across the districts there's things going on which we can all learn from and improve. Litchfield with its um, biodiversity net gain stands out as well, something we can all learn from there. But I could go on about all, all the good things that are going on in each district and I'll just repeat what everybody said, which is not what I'm going to do. But I think I'd like to thank our as chair of the board, really all the, the officer teams that are working behind the scenes in each of the districts and the officer group that's uh, chaired by uh, Clive for the, for the work that they keep bringing uh, papers and, and issues to this board that we, we deal with and we ensure that that gets them back to the cabinets or to the leaders board for implementation for those changes that are beginning to show results across the county on our, on our goals to, to create a more sustainable environment, to bring back nature and also to reduce our carbon emissions. So thank you for that and hopefully those people who are listening will see that they are or watching online that there are a lot of things going on in the county that we can shout about in this area of a state creating a sustainable environment. We'll move now to item three, which of course, on the back of all that we've said, we also need to measure our performance against what we, we say we're going to do. And as part of this board, there is a performance framework in place, both on the sustainability side and also on the waste side. And um, Clive's going to lead off on the sustainability side, take us through the, uh, the performance monitoring, Clive. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, included in the pack is uh, a sort of a RAG document, um, which sort of shows where we are with the 10 pledges that we've all uh, put through our cabinets last summer. Uh, so I say RAG, so um, each um, pledge has been ranked either red, amber or green. So red, if there's uh, significant issues which probably will limit um, or, or stop the actual pledge being met. Uh, green, if it's either um, has been met or it's uh, on progress to be met. And amber, if there's um, issues which probably need to be um, carefully monitored and, and nudged maybe to make sure that the uh, planned activity is underway. So um, as has already been mentioned uh, this afternoon, the good news is that the vast majority of pledges are on track. Um, they've either been completed or, or they're on track. Um, and no red, so that's really positive. Um, and there's a few ambers out there which obviously need to be managed um, individually by each uh, district borough or indeed the county council. So. Um, there's probably not much more to be said at the moment, uh, Chair, uh, but the, the good news is, is that we're, we're on track and I, I probably, I suspect, the Board will want to review uh, the pledges um, in maybe six months' time and consider whether uh, further pledges need to be made or whether or not, because um, obviously certain actions will be completed by that time. So thank you, Chair. Thank you, Clive. Open to sort of any questions from anybody related to that. You all know, obviously, your own district's um, um, performance. And I think from, from my point of view, I think I, I'm really pleased to see the, um, the, the, the carbon lists as you training being spread throughout the, the entire county. And I think that's really key because all officers and all elected members should be climate change champions. And by doing that uh, module of training, whichever way you do it in your district, helps us to achieve that. And I think um, wherever they work within the council, wherever elected member they are, whether they're a chair of a committee or a portfolio holders, they feel there's got nothing to do with climate change. It does, it has to do with reaching our, uh, our goals in this area. And uh, I think that's important to, to note that, uh, Joe. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I would echo those comments as well. I was just going to add, I think one thing that's really important is that all the officers in particular work together on measuring the carbon emissions of each of our councils. And we try and 
develop the same kind of methodology to make sure the measuring of those carbon emissions is as accurate as possible? Because obviously in the room, we've got different levels of expertise on measuring those emissions. I think if more work can be done between the officers to share that information, I think it'd be really helpful. Thank you. Good point, Joe. Any, any other comments? Uh, Ray? Thank you, Chair. Uh, just a, a question from my colleagues around the districts. That uh, Any district who are using green gas supplies, please let us know because we can't find them. Thank you for that. Um, any other comments before we move on to the, um, the waste reduction side of the uh, indicators? No? Okay, Rachel, over to you. Thank you, Chair. Um, so I'll bring your attention to page 31 of the agenda pack. Uh, we're just going to have a quick look at the waste performance data for last year compared to this year. Um, just a few acronyms and terminology just to cover quickly. Um, the HWRC is the Household Waste Recycling Centre Network and residual waste refers to uh, domestic uh, black bag waste in your sort of general waste bin. So what we can see from this data is that Staffordshire performs very well in terms of recycling performance. The national average uh, recycling rate in 2020-2021, which is last year for which data is available, was around 42%. So what we can see from that is that actually on the whole Staffordshire performs very well compared to the average picture. Um, we are seeing a decrease year on year in that recycling rate overall. Again, that is also the national picture. There is a falling recycling rate and part of um, what government is doing through national waste reform is trying to drive those recycling rates back up. Um, there are lots of factors that play into our recycling rate and, and the types of waste that we have to deal with. Um, for example, garden waste is strongly affected by the weather. So what we can see this year is that garden waste rates have fallen. We had a very hot, dry summer this year. Um, and obviously that has a negative impact on our recycling rates. We're also living in a post-COVID world, more people going back to home and school, which means less waste being thrown away at home. So again, a decrease in waste coming through curbside collections. And then impacts of things like the cost of living crisis, where people are consuming less and throwing away less and looking after things that they, they buy a little bit longer. Um, and also some of those initial impacts of producer packaging reforms, where we're seeing changes to the types of materials and the types of recycling coming through bins. Uh, and, you know, for example, the reduction in the size of packaging that producers are, are putting on the market in some cases. Um, what nece doesn't necessarily come through in this data is those improvements to the quality of recycling that we're collecting from residents. Um, you know, we may see a little bit less recycling, but the quality on the whole is a lot better, which means less rejected material, less material flowing through to the incinerator or to energy recovery. Um, and part of that is us having good services, and part of that is also residents taking that care, time and attention to put the right things in the right place. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Rachel. And that's a really good sort of rundown of, of, of where we are with this. You know, we do see some reductions in, in recycling rates as people have moved uh, in, in the headline recycling rate when they've moved to the dual stream. But as you say, the actual quality of the material that's being recycled has increased massively because of that, uh, which is, um, is, is all to the good. And I think all of us as, as councils have got plans to try and increase recycling even further. There are food waste collections mandatory coming down the line as well, which will, will help to increase those rates. But uh, I'll open it up to any, any questions or comments on, on this at the moment. Andrew. Um, just one comment, Chair, if I may, just on our performance. 45% um, doesn't reflect what our actual performance was last year. Um, I'm just wondering if our separate food waste is missing out of those figures because it's not on the line, but we were just shy of 48%. So if we could check that, please. Thank you. Something we're happy for you to correct, Andrew, being the, the leader of the council up in Newcastle, that we are higher than actually it says in the figures. Okay, but it shows what a complex um, uh, situation it is. And of course, once um, you know all, all districts are mandated to do food waste as the government requests, then you'll see that boost across the board. But we need to make sure it's in our figures, don't we, Andrew? Which is great. Okay, not seeing anybody else, so um, that will conclude the public part of the meeting. I'd like to thank. 
Uh, for those, those listening, of course, I hope they've, they've managed to get through to the end, but also to members for their input. And of course, we will be having future public sections of, of the meeting, which we'll advertise, obviously, so people can continually uh, see the updates that we give, because I know this is a really important issue for a lot of people across the county, and it should be for everybody, as it is for us. I will call um, this part of the meeting to a close. Thank you. <laughs>